This is a pelagic, ocean-going fish. This is a fish that's never had to deal with shallow water. That's why these types of rescues are so important. These animals, when they weasel their way into Broad Cove in Onset, or Buttermilk Bay in Bourne, or Wellfleet Harbor, today's rescue was behind us in Duck Creek, these animals are very confused. Well, a mola mola is the scientific name for the ocean sunfish, and it's uh, the common sunfish. There's five different species of ocean sunfish worldwide, and they keep finding new species every few years. They're very unusual fish. Very a little information is known about their biology and their ecology, and so they're really quite captivating. 2009, we had 15. 2010, we had 25. And the numbers went up. Our worst year was 2019. We had 163 ocean sunfish strand alive and dead. And I think what's happening is that the waters are warming in the Gulf of Maine due to climate change, and that's attracting more of these animals up here. You would always see ocean sunfish in this area, you know, prior to 1980, but not in these numbers. And so if you have more fish in the summer and the fall feeding and having a great time, then you're going to have more strandings as they're trying to figure out in the fall and early winter how to get out of here. It's basically like a death trap for them, so they get caught in the Cape Cod um, bay side, mostly in Wellfleet, Truro, East Ham, P Town area, more at the top. Even the smart animals, the dolphins, have a hard time of navigating out of Cape Cod Bay. It's a hook. The Cape is a hook within a hook within a hook. And so the Cape, uh, the geographical feature of the Cape sticks out 60 miles into the Atlantic Ocean. So if you're above or inside and you miss Race Point in that clear shot south, you're going to get funneled into Cape Cod Bay. Now Cape Cod Bay is 20 miles deep and 20 miles wide. So, you know, it's really difficult to figure it out. And they're swimming, they're swimming, they have a great time, I'm going south, I'm heading in the right direction. And then they hit Barnstable or Dennis and they're like, what? If they get past Great Island and Billingsgate Shoal, then they can get caught in Long Point and the hook at Provincetown. So you have the Cape as a hook, you have Wellfleet, Great Island, Billingsgate Shoal as a hook, and you have a long point as a hook. So there's a lot of dangers that they have to try to navigate. There are some fishermen who say there are places just offshore where electronics on a boat can go a bit haywire. Some think this may be the cause of confusion in some of these animals, resulting in strandings. There's a magnetic anomaly? Yeah. Yeah. There are magnetic anomalies in this area and that causes a lot of strandings. Whether ocean sunfish are using that to help them navigate, we don't know. We do know that dolphins and other cetaceans do use it. Uh, but so when they get into these areas where there's that anomaly, that confusion, then they have to switch to sight or sound using their echolocation. If you go down to the canal, like you're going to go into um, Buzzards Bay and Mass Maritimes right at the end, this fish took a turn. Instead of continuing to go down into Buzzards Bay, and he weaseled his way into Buttermilk Bay. It's very easy to manhandle even a thousand pound fish. You just get a strap around them, and now you have all the control. You know, the fish are very docile, so once you get in there and you, and you have a hold on them and you just, I talk to them, they laugh at me, I talk to them and tell them it'll be okay. Um, if you cover their eye, they just kind of float and, and they're, aw they're aware of their surroundings, but they kind of give in to you when they understand that you're not going to hurt them. It is daunting because they're very sweet fish. 
you know, they, they can't really do anything to hurt you and they don't usually try. A lot of times when we do the sighting network, when people report uh, an occurrence uh, with an ocean sunfish offshore, they'll talk about how the fish comes over to the boat and looks at them and circles them, and they really do. But when you're working with a fish that's stressed in shallow water, panicking, you know, it's a big animal and it's very, you know, powerful. I grew up on a farm milking cows and cows are sweethearts, but they're big, powerful animals and you have to give them a lot of respect and you have to know how to handle them. With an ocean sunfish, the worst they can do is spit water at you. I think that the more you handle them, um, pull them around, uh, muscle them, drag them in the hula hoop or on the lily pad, I think you're stressing these animals out. And I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not a vet, I don't have that background, but our goal is to get these animals out of these bad areas as quickly as possible. And then if they're dead, as good marine biologists, if we have a carcass that washes up, then we'll switch gears and we'll necropsy, or it's the version, you know, the animal version of a human autopsy. So we'll necropsy a carcass, get some weights, get a measurement, some body measurements, get photographs, collect tissues, look inside, see if we can determine cause of death, and also open up the whole digestive system and see if we can determine what they ate. Once we opened up a female torpedo ray, she weighed over 200 pounds that stranded dead on Long Point, and they're known to eat fish, but she had inside of her digestive tract an entire duck, a long-tailed duck. And we're like, what? <laughs> We're trying to still figure out how to age them. We haven't been able to figure out a way of aging them. And so what we're doing is we're working with Dr. Rich McBride and Dr. John Logan, Dr. Scott Elsey, and we're providing samples of ovaries and vertebra and tissue. And we're all trying to figure out if there's some structure on the body that we can use to try to determine their age. What challenges this species the most? Well, I think with all marine wildlife, um, marine debris, you know, having plastics in the ocean. Ocean sunfish kind of suck um, jellyfish in, and they have these um, spines in the upper part of the throat called uh, pharyngeal gill teeth, and it helps to keep the jellyfish moving down the throat, and it helps shred it. And so if they were to suck in by accident a plastic bag or a balloon that looks like a jellyfish, it would pretty much go down in their digestive tract. And so for all marine wildlife, whether it's whales, seals, seabirds, giant bluefin tuna, plastics in the ocean are really bad. And then that also includes our fishing gear, any discarded fishing gear, not just ropes, but also monofilament, which is really hard to see. Uh, that's creating a huge challenge. And then warming waters. These animals are here because Cape Cod is cold, but as you know and other people have noticed, the Cape's not as cold as it used to be. In the winter, a lot of these harbors aren't icing up. We have 70, 80 degree weather in January, which is great, but it doesn't make any sense. And so with warming waters, you lose your productivity. And that's going to impact all of the animals, not just ocean sunfish, that rely on whether it's phytoplankton, zooplankton, fish, small fish, whatever, uh, to survive. So we're having a huge impact, uh, not just on us, but also on the other animals, plants, and other organisms that share this planet with us. So we're trying to get the fish as far out of Wellfleet Harbor as we can. Wellfleet Harbor is a very long harbor, about four and a half miles. And so if we just bring them out of the inner harbor and let them go, the odds are that it's going to come back in. Yeah. So our job is to get them out as far as we can. The problem is how do you move a four, five, six hundred pound fish? These fish don't roll. You know what I mean? And these fish are, on average, 500, 600, 700 pounds. 
That's why when they get into these shallow waters too, they'll really move on their side because they can't. They can't swim normally. And that's also, lots of times when they're in these shallow waters, if we can't catch them yet, we'll get in the water with them and swim with them or kayak them into an area where we can get you know, a hoop around them or a strap. And quite often, we have to do that because even if they're moving in the right direction, if that anal fin, that bottom fin hits the bottom, they panic and they turn around and they'll go in the wrong direction. And so even the ocean sunfish, with all of its weirdness, deserves our attention. And by connecting the community, working with the community, sharing our data and our information and the tissues we collect from the carcasses with researchers all over the world, we are helping to learn more about this animal, uh, which I think is very deserving. I mean, how can you, how can you walk by a 400 pound fish flopping in shallow water with the tide going out. I don't know how anybody can do that.